advice, just head on over to supertalktv.com. You'll see I'm not alone in the studio today. Joining me with this squad is Peter Griffin, and he always comes with good updates and good things that you guys are doing throughout the state. So welcome back. Yeah, thanks for having me back. I'm happy to have you back, and I'm happy to share every time um, you guys come on about the good work that you do. And it feels like it's expanding, it's expanding, it's expanding, which is part of the mission and part of your quest. So give us an update. How is, well, we're in a new year, so how how did 2022 wrap up for Fist Squad? Uh, 2022 uh, was a, a pretty good year. Um, every year our assistance provided has grown exponentially. Uh, so last year we uh, assisted 188 Mississippi veterans uh, with over $75,000 in assistance. And uh, for folks that don't know, Fist Squad is a, a, a nonprofit veterans charity. We're a 501c3. And we help Mississippi veterans with immediate life-sustaining needs. So. Uh, if they get a three-day eviction notice, if their lights are going to be turned out later on this evening, uh, they need grocery money because, like most Americans, they live paycheck to paycheck. And if you've got to pay $800 to fix your car to get to work, right. something's got to give. Uh, so we just request we, – we, well, we require that the, the veteran provides us uh, documentation. Uh, they're, they're DD-214, which is a piece of paper that all the military people get when they get discharged from the military. They have an honorable – service classification on their DD-214. Uh, then they provide us with their bill. We don't give any money to the veteran. We pay the electric bill or the landlord or uh, we have a Walmart pickup system that we use and we, we do all of that directly to them. We don't give any money to the veteran. Uh, we don't assist with cell phones and credit cards or anything. We're there for the immediate life-sustaining needs of the veteran and their family. And that's not because you don't necessarily trust the veteran. That's more of a transparency for those that are donating. You can show without a shadow of a doubt that the funds are going to meet everyday, you know, functional needs, and there can be no question of that. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, you know, I mean, like we're, I'm, I'm a veteran. And, uh, you know, we're, we're veterans, not saints. Uh, so if somebody comes to us and they have a legitimate need uh, for, say, a utility bill, we don't know what other issues they have going on in their life. Uh, so if we give them the money, um, there's no guarantee that it goes to that. You know, they may have some type of substance abuse issue or gambling addiction or something else going on um, that they're not in control of making rash rational decisions, and it affects their family and, and, and them in the long run. Uh, so like you said, for the transparency, we, we pay the vendors or whoever the company is directly. Uh, there, there's no middleman. We get a copy of the bill. They served honorably, and we immediately get to work with uh, assisting the veteran. Seventy-five thousand dollars last yeah, year. So That's incredible. Yeah, fifty thousand dollars of that was uh, was based on housing needs. So, when a veteran gets an eviction notice, uh, we'll get a, referred a lot of veterans from the VA, which is you know the big federal government. They're supposed to be out there helping veterans. Uh, they send people to us. Uh, in our organization. That speaks highly, though, of what you guys are doing and what you can do without the red tape. Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> and, like, there's, uh, there might be a program to, for the VA or grants or something that you could apply for, but you got to fill out paperwork and you get to wait. And when you're getting evicted tomorrow uh, or your lights are getting cut right. off at 5 o'clock, uh, there, there's no time to wait. And our, uh, I think our record for getting lights turned back on was eight minutes from when we received Really? The, yeah, well, we got an email from the veteran. They provided everything we needed up front, all the documentation. Uh, and we notified the light company and got them, got them set up. Those that you are able to help like that, like lights on in eight minutes, um, do you get, and I know now that you've had Fist Squad for several years now, I love that you're doing all of your data sort of figuring out where, where are the needs most. Do you find that just that act of kindness helps that person uh, not have to need it the next time or the next time, or do you find do you have repeat sort of needs, or we, do you address those? Yeah, we do. Uh, so what we also ask is that the veteran gives us kind of a, a rundown of why they're in the situation that they're in and what their plan is going forward. Because if they had lost their job, you know, then employment is the issue. So they need help this month, but what about next month? So we don't want to just say, all right, well, we'll help you this month, because we can only help a veteran uh, once a year and it's a three-time maximum. So we kind of put some limitations on there, and we work with other ch great charitable organizations. And uh, if somebody has already given, exhausted their resources for, for this veteran, they'll steer them our way. If we've kind of exhausted our resources for them, uh, then we'll steer them towards another agency that can assist. So we try to get them all of the help to get them out of the situation that they're in. So like Milwaukee Tool is a huge, huge sponsor of ours. So they're always hiring veterans. They love to hire veterans. They're very pro-veteran. So if somebody has some type of skills or they live close to one of the places that Milwaukee has in the state, 
then you know we're more than happy to refer them to somebody to try to get them employment because at the end of the day they need a job right and if that's what we can help them with to you know help them with some groceries this month for their family and then you know get them some employment and get them back stable then that's our ultimate goal because whenever your i guess fundamental needs aren't being met whether it's you can't meet them or they're just you know looming over your head it's really hard to focus on going to job interviews or even getting online and sort of thinking about it, it just becomes this cloud that you sort of find yourself spiraling in. Sometimes all it needs to know is your family's taken care of. Wow, that was really kind. Let me get out there and, you know, do my part or do what I can sort of do to, to make sure it doesn't happen again. Yeah, absolutely. That's that's our whole idea is that we want to provide more than just a bill pay for, for a veteran. Uh, we want to help them as much as we can with our resources. And if that's with, you know, one of our various corporate sponsorships like Milwaukee or uh, the Mississippi Braves is a big sponsor of ours, and they're always looking for seasonal help at their places. And uh, we had a guy down there in Brookhaven where I live, and he had lost his job. His company that he worked for went under. There was no notice or anything. Uh, He came to us for some mortgage assistance, and he mentioned that he applied to jobs at certain places and everything. And uh, we we were able to go over and talk to somebody and and say, hey, this, this guy would be a great great fit for this job. We got him a job. Well, you're bringing up a good point here on good things. If someone's listening who thinks, man, you know, maybe I have the type of business or I'm in the type of industry that would be a great fit for for the people who, you know, that sort of meet that, Peter. I mean, because that's the other piece of this. Yes, you want to raise funds and yes, you have your great events. I know we're getting all that. But, you know, at also times you need community partners to be able to link your veterans sort of to who makes the good partner for reaching out to Fifth Quad and say, hey, if you find a veteran who's looking for work, you know, we're it. Or it, could it be anybody? It, it can really be anybody. Um, you know, when veterans have a big pride issue and they're going to come down, they're going to wait till the last minute to contact us. Uh, that's That's been our experience. And so, you know, wh- whether it's as a veteran or, you know, just as a, as a person in general, uh, that you don't want to ask for help. You don't want to look for a handout. And that's that's not really what we are. We're trying to give you a hand up in life and try to try to. What's the age? Do you know you'll have the age range of you mentioned, I think, 50 percent or more of it was for housing. What are they of retirement age? I mean, uh, it just, does yeah. it fall into that? Because that's a I mean, that would be a little bit harder in terms of for employment. Yeah. So uh, it, it really it really varies. Um, I mean, we can get the data and, and, and crunch it down by that. But a lot of it is going to be, um, you know, you have people that are on very limited income. Yeah. Uh, and they're, you know, they have a low rating of VA disability or no rating for VA disability, even though they have some type of disability. Uh, and then they're probably on Social Security or they're on some other type of government assistance. And they may be in the HUD-VASH program through the VA, uh, which, you know, their rent might be $300 a month. You know, but if they have a vehicle or if they have some type of health situation where they have to get medication or, or pay doctor's bills. and. You know, if Murphy shows up. Yeah, if they're already stretching thin, you know, it doesn't take very much to break it. So, you know, we try to we work a lot with uh, with people in that situation. Well, then that also though raises the just the opportunity for those listening who are have businesses of employment. If you do have seasonal work, or maybe when I say low skilled, I just mean you know for those that could be fifty five, sixty, sixty five that come in and sort of uh, feel for you know maybe not a full salary, but at least you know something. It gives a sense of of pride and responsibility. Then. Yeah, I mean, I think I think we need to be thinking, you know, as those that own businesses or industries, ways that we can fill smaller gaps. Even full time employment's a big thing; part time's good, but even the part part time, like the you know the as needed kind of. Yeah, absolutely. And if if somebody has a business where you know they're looking for full time employment, their the best way to reach out is either through Facebook or to email us, uh, and. We're happy to keep your name and and your location and the types of jobs that you have. Or if somebody just you know, wants to give the opportunity to somebody that may be retired and may not be in a financial bind, but they want to try to give this person, you know, a, another thing to, a few to hours, strive five for. Five hours a week. Yeah, something you know, to strive something, for, get them yeah. out of the house, try to give them a purpose uh, again and have them go out and, and walk dogs at a shelter or pet cats or something or just, you know, greet people at the door. Or, or It's human nature for the majority, I mean, to want to be needed or to have a purpose. And so for often those that find themselves on the other side of retirement, whether it was by choice or just by circumstance, 
not having that kind of sense of purpose anymore can you know is a it sets the downward spiral so you can reverse that by just showing someone they're still needed and Absolutely. they're still valued in that way and that's one thing you guys do so well there at fifth squad we've got more with peter griffin coming up next continuing our conversation with peter griffin he's with fifth squad who is helping veterans and man y'all did a um a, $75,000 last year. That's crazy. Do you know how many? That's a hundred. You said 188 veterans total that you all were able to to assist. Okay, so you were talking about the percentage that was for housing. What's the other main need that you find that when the veterans reach out to Fist Squad or is for? Uh, it's going to be for utilities. Uh, some people do come and request things that we just don't provide assistance with, and we direct them towards other charitable organizations that do. Uh, so we can still get that veteran some assistance somewhere. Uh, but it's generally utilities, uh, groceries, and then we have some other incidental things. I know we had a veteran who had his bike stolen in Jackson. He didn't drive or anything. That's how we got to and from doctor's appointments and work and everything. So we went and we bought him a new bicycle and a nice bike lock uh, to get him taken care of there. Uh, we've gotten bus tickets. We had a veteran uh, come to us that was very low income. Uh, their son had passed away in North Carolina. And they were, were requesting assistance getting to North Carolina for the funeral. Uh, and so we, we purchased them a bus a bus ticket, and uh, we got them on their way to North Carolina so they could go out there and be with their family. Uh, other instances, if there's a veteran has a you know a, a fire, we'll put them up in a hotel or uh, <coughs> things like that. So. so, I mean, it's just it runs the gamut. There's no, like, one thing that and, – and then if it if you do, you're sort of like a catch-all there. You're able to sort of then, um, I guess, triage them to where, where they need to go. What year is this for Fist Squad? Uh, it's going to be about seven years, I think. It was. It was. We've been around. We started out as kind of just like a like a guys' club uh, in the military. Yeah. Uh, you get promoted, and you move units, and all this other stuff. And we wanted to keep that camaraderie because when you're in a unit with somebody and deploy with people, you build relationships, and then you kind of get scattered to the wind as your careers progress. And uh, so we made the organization, you know, kind of like a motorcycle club with no motorcycles, where we would just get together and hang out and and uh, you know tell lies and stories all the time and 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 uh, have a good good fun uh, and then it kind of evolved more into more uh, most of us at the time were still serving in the National Guard uh, and in the military and we had soldiers that had issues and we didn't really know where to send them there, there was we saw that there was a need in the community for this nobody else was doing what we do so we said you know why, why don't we do it I know you and Lee Stringer was the other co-founder for Fist Squad. I think there may have been several of you guys, but, you know, it's good to know that you two are still full-time employees. It's like you you just continue to do this, um, you know, because it needs to be done and it's the right thing to do. But you, Peter, have always had the vision that this would grow and grow larger and sort of spread. Do you see that still, that there can be Fist Squads everywhere? Yeah, so uh, Lee, Lee's, Lee's kind of the driving force behind the spread. Um, uh, he's He's always wanted this to get bigger and bigger and all of us involved want it to get as big as possible. Uh, so, you know, our ultimate goal would be to have a chapter of Fifth Squad in every state. Like I said, all the money raised here stays in Mississippi and helps Mississippi veterans. Well, the needs of Mississippi veterans are going to fluctuate greatly from somebody in Wisconsin. And the, the resources available uh, through other agencies and, and government entities in, in Wisconsin or Oklahoma are going to be different than other states. So we need a chapter in every state to fill, fulfill the specific needs that aren't being met in those communities and in those states uh, to better serve veterans. And then there's a sense of pride and responsibility for those who give and donate to Fifth Squad, that they're taking care of their own. Not that you shouldn't take care of veterans across state lines. That's not what I'm necessarily saying. But when you, it's personal. Then it's, yes. it really is your neighbors yeah. and you really are taking care of the ones, you know, in your in your community. Now, you guys have been boots on the ground figuratively, literally all year last year and I guess beyond to get to that 75,000 mark. So what are your big moments throughout the year other than just small personal donations, the events that really make that happen? Yeah. So uh, we hold a couple of different charity golf tournaments. Uh, upcoming this April, we have uh, what we call the Old Brook open down in Brookhaven and it's four man golf scramble uh, teams can come down we're looking for business sponsorships for whole sponsorships uh, we have different levels of sponsorship that you can do based on what your financial abilities are or how much you want to support the event and the organization and uh, we have a another golf tournament up here at Castlewoods every October called the Campbell Scramble uh, named after one of our, our good friends that uh, veteran that passed away from leukemia and uh, his name was Jacob Campbell. He was an, an avid golfer and loved golf, so we named it in honor of him. Uh, we do a Veterans Cup two-man scramble down in Wesson. Uh, we're always open to do more events. Uh, we attend trade shows. We do 
Um, of course, our annual uh, Ruck for Rugrats, which benefits the Mississippi Children's Hospital. How many Hospital. Uh, presents did y'all ruck this year? Uh, so we had we had a little 400 people sign up for the event. Uh, we've changed our route a little bit because we used to start at Jackson Prep, and uh, you know we've outgrown that starting point. So we changed our starting point over to Veteran Memorial Stadium parking lot. They were gracious enough to let us use that facility in that area to stage all of our, our sign-in and to step off from. And we changed our route a little bit. Uh, it's a little bit more friendly. And uh, so we went around, and we had a uh, little 400 people sign up, and we delivered about $60,000 worth of toys. That's incredible. Yeah, the hospital told us that uh, I think said 90% of their toys they use throughout the year when children come up there for, for services or anything like that. Uh, they actually, 90% of the toys they use come from our one event. And uh, this year we were able to go up into the hospital, a very small group of us were able to go into the hospital and deliver some toys uh, using proper safety and health protocols uh, and go up there and, and uh, to see the, the children, how happy they were and, and see how grateful the families were. And, you know, I mean, I, luckily, thank God, I, I my child's never had some right. serious thing going on. But, you know, to see the, 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 the worry and, and the tiredness on some of the parents' face that are sleeping on these uncomfortable couches in these rooms, you know, so they can be there with their child when they wake up. Uh, you know, to to see that kind of disappear for a second while we while we help those families out, it was it was one of the most rewarding instances that that I've had. And it's one of the many ways that you can be a part of that, even if you can't necessarily be there. It's just by you know being a friend of, of FISWAD and just being interested in the events in your area and getting involved if you if you feel mm-hmm. led to. I know uh, Memorial Day is coming up, uh, quick, oh, fast, yes. in a hurry. I mean, the beautiful <laughs> weather outside makes you think about this the summertime. You guys uh, did it big last year. That's it was good. your first an- I don't know first annuals, right? Grammar. Yeah. Some people, <laughs> but the first one. So this will be the second annual. Yes. So you are bringing it back. This we year. are, we are. It's uh, and it's and it's going to be bigger. If you know anything about Fifth Squad and you've attended any of our events, they just get bigger and 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 badder and just crazier and over the top, like we do with all our our golf tournaments and yeah. and all of our events that we put on. Um, so yeah, this year it's 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 going to be bigger and it's going to be the Sunday before Memorial Day at Trustmark Park with the Mississippi Braves. And uh, I don't want to give too much away, but you, you don't want to miss it. Uh, you better start reserving your, your tickets now to get there. And we're also looking for businesses to come join us. They have an event in the morning. Uh, the 20 Special Forces and the Special Forces Committee out there, the groups, uh, they have a workout called the, the SEV, which is for uh, SEV Summers, mm-hmm. uh, who, who was killed in Afghanistan. And uh, so they they put on an event in the morning, and we'll be there for that. Uh, we're looking for businesses and stuff to sponsor that event, and then we'll also be there in the evening for the game, and we have advertising opportunities and opportunities for businesses to come show their support for, for the for the Braves and uh, for Fist Squad and everybody else that's there, and uh, set up a tent, put their products out there, advertise. And How do you not get burned out, Peter? Uh, well, we we kind of we kind of do. Uh, you know, we we went to a uh, nonprofit conference. Funny story, real quick. So we went to a, a conference with a bunch of nonprofit people. Uh, me, Lee, and Ronnie, who's our our treasurer, uh, probably the smartest guy in the group. So we go out there and uh, we're talking to a bunch of people in these huge, huge organizations out in like you know this lady's with the Heart Association of, o- of Oregon, and we we're, we're telling them about our organization. As we tell everybody, you can't talk to you can't talk to me for more than five minutes without me telling you about Fist Squad or trying to pick your pocket for us. But uh, we were talking to them, and they were like, oh, wow, that's really great what you guys do. I mean, how, how many people do you have? And we're like, oh, well, we have, like, you know, four board members. And they're like, oh, well, how many employees do you have? And we're like, yeah, none, none. And they're like, well, how do you do that? It's like, well, we do it. Like, but don't you have jobs? Like, 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 yeah, we have jobs. And that's when they, you know, we, a lot of the different organizations we spoke to, you know, they they were telling, talking to us about, you know, you can only sustain that for so long, you know, and and you're going to get burned out, and and we don't want the uh, the services we provide to suffer. We don't want to have to have a veteran wait any longer than they have to for us to give them any assistance. Well, I can see it's going to continue to grow, and as God continues to provide, y'all will figure all of that out. I know you, you and Lee and the other. I don't think I've met Ronnie. Are going to no, no, let Ronnie's this, kind of a hermit. Uh, he kind of stays inside all <laughs> the time. Ronnie, you're up next. Just <laughs> going ahead and putting that out there to you. I feel like you'll find a way to sort of keep the spirit of the uh, Fist Squad going. Oh yes. And I know every time someone hears about it, you, there's there's nothing not to love about it and to want to be sort of part of it. So how do we do that? How do we get involved? How do we stay up to date? What do we do? Oh, so you want to follow us on Facebook? That's probably going to be your best way. Everything's done through the, the, the Facebooks these days. So uh, Fifth Squad on Facebook, number 5TH 
and the word squad. You can follow us on there, Instagram, fistsquad.com. Uh, we got some campaigns that we're kind of doing to help some deploying Mississippi National Guard soldiers. Uh, we got all kinds of events and opportunities for people to volunteer, to donate, to get involved. And uh, we, we'd love to have you contact us and, and see how we can work together to help more M- Mississippi veterans. All righty. Well, you know you're welcome back closer to Memorial Day. You'll have a big event coming up then. But it's always good having you here, Peter. Um, and stick with us. we got more for you guys coming up next.